Okay, welcome back. In the last video we were, or the last few videos, we've been talking about these things called force uh, vector components, and we kind of defined what components are and how we can use uh, these things called unit vectors to define the direction of those components. So in this video, I want to talk about how we can resolve particular force vectors into their respective components, because every force vector can be resolved into sub vectors which are called components of that force. So to start off, let's draw our reference axes just as we normally do for vectors that are 2D. So let's say this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. And then let's say we have this force vector which I'll just call f. And this force vector f is making a certain angle from uh, the x-axis which I'll just call theta. Now, in the last few videos, we learned how to represent this force vector f in terms of its components. And so we can say that this force vector f is really equal to this, uh, the magnitude of the f of x vector times the unit vector i plus the magnitude of the y component times the unit vector j. And again, this right here, uh, f of x and f of y, these are scalar quantities. So these are the magnitudes of their respective components. So uh, just off to the side, again, f of x, uh, which is the force component of f, that's simply equal to the magnitude of f of x times the unit vector i. And the same thing goes for this f of y uh, vector right here. That's just the magnitude uh, times the unit vector j. And so both of these are just those scalar quantities uh, magnitudes. And the i and the j uh, unit vectors, those specify the directions along the x and the y axis, respectively. So if we look back at this diagram right here, we have this force vector f, and we know that f is comprised of f of x and f of y. And so the uh, force components of this uh, f vector are, well, 1 along the x-axis, which is right here, and I'll just call that f of x. And then we also have this y uh, force vector, which I'll call f of y. And again, these are just this force vector and this force vector right here. And so you can see that if we added this f of x vector uh, and this f of y vector, we would get this f vector right here. And you can see that this now makes a triangle with this particular angle theta. And what do we know about triangles? Well, we can use cosine and sine to figure out the magnitudes or the lengths of these sides of the triangle, given that we know uh, the side of the hypotenuse. So in this example right here, what we could do is if we wanted to figure out what f of x was, we could use cosine of that theta angle is going to be equal to, well, cosine is what of a triangle? It's adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it would be the magnitude of this f of x vector divided by the magnitude of the hypotenuse, which is just f. And so if we simplify this by just multiplying by the magnitude of f to both sides, what we would get is f, and I'm just going to write f as the magnitude, times cosine theta. This is equal to the magnitude of the f of x vector. And notice how I did not draw the arrows on top of uh, this force right here and this force right here. And again, that's just because those are the magnitudes. Okay, so great. We now know how to figure out what f of x is, right? It's just this equation right here. Now let's do the same thing uh, for f of y. Well, f of y is the opposite side to theta, so maybe we could use sine of theta. Sine of theta is, well, that's opposite over hypotenuse, so we can take f of y, the magnitude of that vector, uh, divided by the magnitude of f. And if we rewrite this, we get something similar. We get f times the sine of theta this time, and that is equal to the magnitude of f of y. So these two equations right here are good equations that we could use to figure out the magnitudes of these components, f of x and f of y. So to put this into practice, let's use these two equations right here, and let's do a very quick uh, numerical example down here. 
Okay, so in this example, we have our force vector right here called F, and it has a magnitude of 290 newtons. Now, it's also making an angle of 125 degrees from this horizontal x-axis. And in this example, we want to figure out what f of x and f of y are so that we could represent this force vector f in terms of its components. So in other words, we need to figure out this x component right here, which would be f of x, and this y component right here, which would be f of y. And we could do so using these two equations that we found above. So let's start off with f of x. Well, f of x, and I'll do this in white, f of x, the magnitude of f of x, is going to be f cosine theta. Well, f has a magnitude of 290 newtons, so I can just write that here as the magnitude of f times the cosine of theta, which in this case is 125 degrees. Now, intuitively, you should be able to see that if this force factor is acting in the second quadrant, right, this this right here is the first quadrant, this is the second, you know that the x component of this force vector f is going to go to the left. So you should intuitively know that the magnitude of that component is going to be negative. And so if I plug this into our calculator, we do in fact get a negative value of negative 166.3 newtons. Now we can do the same thing for f of y. And in this case, uh, we're going to use this second equation right here. And we'll say that 290 newtons times the sine of 125 degrees. Well, this is going to give us a value of 237.6 uh, newtons. And this is positive, and that makes sense, right? Because this vector is acting uh, up and to the left. And so you know that the y component is going to go up. It's going to be positive. Okay, awesome. So now that we know the magnitudes of f of x and f of y, we can actually write this uh, force factor a little bit more properly. So if you remember from this above uh, diagram right here where we just had this arbitrary force f, we said that we can write f in terms of its x component and its y component. So f of x, again, is just the magnitude. It's a scalar times the unit vector i to indicate that it's going along the horizontal axis or the x-axis. And then the same thing for uh, this y component. Now that we know the uh, x component magnitude and the y component magnitude, what I can say is that that force vector, which is 290 newtons, well, I'll rewrite the above equation right here. It's going to be f of x times uh, the unit vector i plus f of y, the magnitude, uh, times the unit vector j. And we know those values, right? We calculated them here and here. And so this equation turns into, well, f of x is negative 166.3 newtons in the i direction, plus 237.6 newtons in the j direction. And so this is awesome. So this is a more formal way of representing this force vector f, and that's because here is the component f of x. It has a magnitude of 166, and we know because of this unit vector i, it's acting along the horizontal uh, axis, and because of the negative sign, we know it's going to be acting to the left. And the same thing here, this is f of y. This is the component f of y, and this has a magnitude of 237, and it's acting upwards in the j direction, or the y direction. And so again, this is why unit vectors are so important, because they allow us to write these uh, force vectors or any vector in terms of their components, and each of these components has a magnitude and a direction. Okay, so it's always good to verify our results and our findings, and above, uh, you know, notice that we, we came up with these equations right here uh, based off of this triangle. And so in order to verify the values that we have down here, what we can do is we can see that if, you know, this is side A and this is side B and this is side C, we can use Pythagorean theorem to verify that if we took the square of the x component magnitude and the square of the y component magnitude and we added them together and then took the square root of that value, that should equal the magnitude of side C, which is this force vector F. So in other words, you know, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, where A and B 
uh, represent the x component and the y component sides, and c is the hypotenuse. In this case, the hypotenuse is this force vector right here. So I could say that, well, negative 166.3 newtons, if I were to square that, and then add that to 237.6 newtons, and I squared that, that should give us r squared, right? The magnitude r squared, which in this case is 290. So if I plug this in and I solved for r, I would get r has a value of, well, exactly 290 newtons. And that matches up, right? 290 newtons is the magnitude of this f vector.